today's big shed bug is uh, whatever this is. Grasshopper, I guess. It's very green. It seems pretty relaxed. I'm just going to take them outside and put them on the trees. I decided it was time to start working on the Riley again. Now that I've got space and uh, workbenches set up, the idea is to reassemble the chassis so I can make the the pins that go in here for the the front of the rear springs. But I also wanted to fix up something that's been annoying me for a little while, which is these front engine and suspension mounts. So these are bolted on the car. Uh, one, I want to actually paint them. I'll probably just paint them black like the rest of the uh, the running gear at the moment. This is just primer on here at the moment. Um, and the other thing that's always annoyed me a little bit is these brackets are cast and they have little bosses that where they sit where the bolts go through but the problem on mine is this curve starts a fraction too early so where the bolts go through these back holes it's not actually flat so the bosses in behind here aren't really sitting up hard up against the chassis rail like they should do so before I just put little washers in behind there to space them out. Uh, you might be able to see there's a washer in there and a washer in the top. And that works fine, that's not too bad a problem. But of course the washer's flat and because of the curve on the chassis, really they need to be tapered. So I decided to make little tapered washers for them. Uh, the other thing I've, I'm doing is I'm cutting down the bolts to, to make them shorter. and. The way I've been doing that is I made this little collar, it's just plastic, that I can slip over the bolts. I can hold that in the vise, cut the, the thread off and then just clean up the end of the thread in the, in the lathe here. Uh, just so they're all nice and tidy. I know I could just file them or something, but I like them all to be nice and square and really neat. So I'm using that to make them all shorter and to figure out what sort of washer I need in here. Obviously it needs to be tapered and I had to figure out how much taper there was and this is kind of a diagram of it showing the the, the bracket with the little mounting bosses and how the, the chassis rail sort of curves out. So to figure out what size washer I needed in there I used feeler gauges and I pushed it through until I felt resistance at the far end of the boss which is its narrowest point, and then added uh, feelers until it just slipped under the front end. And I came up with a measurement in millimeters uh, of the, the difference in thickness that I needed for the washers. So I do have a stack of washers that are um, pretty much the right thickness for the big thickness. And then the problem was to to make those tapered. I'm not even sure you'll be able to see it really, but you can see these have been filed so there's actually a taper on them. Uh, they're relatively flat on the top, they're not perfect, but they're reasonably good. And the way I did that was using this magnet and I'm able to hold the washer with the magnet and then carefully file it. And I say carefully because, of course, files are steel and so they get attracted to the magnet. So you just kind of have to very carefully file. It's a bit hard with one hand, but uh, file like that. And then I'm also using the, the random orbit sander, which takes quite a bit off. And then flattening them off just on a piece of 240 grit paper. And that gives me the the sort of taper I need. So what I can do is I can um, slide those in between the chassis rail and the casting and that'll give take up the gap between them really nicely so it's all going to be bolted in nice and firmly. It's probably not even necessary but it, it just bugs me that it isn't quite right. Uh, interestingly I've been talking to a chap who's uh, they're building a, a replica Brooklyn's as well with a replica chassis and they've got the exact same problem and they did more or less the same thing 
um, with tapered washers just to, to take up that gap there. So I'm going to keep doing that. Um, and I'm going to take these brackets off and just give them a quick spray, I think. This is the, the casting for the offside mount. And you can see the little bosses that are cast into it. And they stand it up off the chassis rail. So when it's all bolted up hard, there's actually a gap under here. And you can see how the, if I can get the light right, the tapered washer will go in there. After I paint this, I'll, I'll just super glue it onto the face so that uh, it just holds in place while I get the bolts through. And then once it's all done up tight, that should be pulled up really tight against the chassis rail. And I'm using proper high tensile bolts for this which have spring washers and will be locked tight in place as well. Normally these are riveted in, so they, they don't come undone. These are all my bolts cut down. I measured the near side and it was a slightly bigger gap, but less of a taper, if that makes sense. So they needed slightly less filing. I have to walk all the way over here. I uh, just painted the the brackets with some uh, Duplicolor engine black. You can't see the washers on there. But uh, on this one you can see I super glued the washers to the metal before I spray painted it and just spray painted around everything. And um, that's all nice and uh, matches the chassis rails now. So tomorrow when those dry I will bolt those back on the car, probably for the last time, because when it comes to painting the car, all of that stuff can stay on, it just gets painted over, which is, I think, how they did it from the factory anyway. I did just spray some of the same paint just around where I drilled the holes, just because uh, I had to drill those holes, so there was no paint on those. So now that's all nicely sealed up with paint. Uh, I may even smear some copper grease or something in, just in between them. I don't think it's ever actually going to rust out in between there, but it's not going to hurt. And then the next thing will be put the, the front axle back on. Front axle, front springs back on. And start looking at the rear. The other thing I can do now that I've got the torque tube is start looking at assembling the differential crown wheel and pinion maybe uh, that would be good as well but the most important thing i think is these rear pins because once i've done those i can then um, i'm much closer to getting the car on its wheels that's when i'll need the, need the rear axle done as well of course so just small jobs today but it's good to be making progress on this again Tonight, when I got home from work, I only had time to do it a little bit, really. So I have bolted the engine mounts, engine and suspension mounts, back on the car. So that's with the cut down bolts and the little tapered spaces to take up the little bit of gap that's in here. And that's worked really well. So these are done up really nice and tight now. Uh, because their bolts are not rivets, I used a little bit of Loctite bearing fit around the uh, the shank of the of the bolt, um, just to fill in any little gaps in between there. And I used thread locker and spring washers on the nuts. So, and they're torqued up pretty hard, so I don't think they're going to go anywhere. Normally, these would have been riveted on, um, but the high tensile bolts will work as well. Then I found the front shocks and the pile of parts because they're going to need to go on as well. And uh, rummaging through the boxes, I found the uh, the front shackles and the front shackle pins and all of that stuff as well. So hopefully tomorrow I will get a chance to reassemble the front end, rebolt on the steering column. Uh, I might put my temporary block back in place on the engine mounts. I, I also found those. Uh, they probably need a paint, actually. And then I think I can simultaneously start looking at assembling the engine, doing a test assembly of that, 
because I need to make sure it's all going to go together, that the flywheel tape is correct and that kind of thing before I send it off for balancing. Um, so I can do that as well as working on the, the pins for the, the rear suspension. And I should maybe start looking at the rear axle and torque tube. So there's lots to do, but I'm slowly finding the parts again. So some Riley progress tonight. I'm, I'm trying to just do something every night. Um, even just one little tiny thing, just to try and progress things and keep moving ahead. But tonight I put the front end all back together. Uh, it's actually fairly tricky to do by yourself. So you, I used the jack there and sort of lifted the axle up carefully, precariously balanced on it. Um, but to get all the U-bolts the and everything to line up is, is reasonably hard because everything has to be straight because the there's not a lot of slop in it, so everything needs to be straight so the bolts line up and everything goes through. But uh, I was able to to uh, get it all together by myself, which is good. And I haven't really done anything else on the rest of it at the moment. Uh, the other thing I was able to do is we got a skip bin in, which you can kind of just see out there. So I was able to clear that big pile of rubbish, which was all, all for the skip. So... Um, I'm getting space back again. The that other pile will all go into my little outdoor office when that arrives. And I sort of started sorting out my my bench back here. Just coming up with a place for all my nuts and bolts and screws and, and various things and was able to put some of the tools up out of the way. Uh, and there's storage under there for tires and things. I still need to really sort out that shelving, uh, sort out this shelving. I do have that cheap uh, shelving there, so I may put those units together. I have to add extra braking, uh, bracing to them because they, they're pretty flimsy. And I need to get hold of more blasting media grit for my little sandblasting cabinet. One thing I may do, since it's empty, is take it all apart and put silicone in all of these these seals because even though you think it's tight uh, the, the, the media just finds its way out everywhere uh, although to be honest for the way the shed is built dust and stuff's going to get in because there's lots of airflow through the uh, the way the corrugations work there's gaps all through there it's going to be interesting in the middle of winter how, how cold it gets in here uh, the new compressor is all working nicely and I've added a water trap to it now, which is which is good. It didn't come with one, uh, which I didn't realize when I bought it, but it was easy enough to, to find one and add it. Uh, I think that's about it. I may start going through a lot of these boxes because this is all uh, my electronic stuff and my model making stuff and various bits and pieces. And some of it has been in boxes since I moved to Wellington. So it's been in there for five years. There's probably stuff there I can get rid of. And it makes sense doing that while we've got the skip here. And I think that's about it. Uh, I'm still trying to get in touch with the, the right people to find out about getting that vind finally. Uh, it's pretty much ready to go. And then I'll just keep going on the Riley. I've solved the problem of it being cold in here. Uh, I now have my fake fireplace, my comfy chairs, a rug, and the nice engine block to use as a footstool. So I think that'll be fine. Today was just a few more little jobs, tidying up, organizing things, that kind of stuff. Um, slowly I'm getting everything into the places it needs to be. And I'm sort of making more space as I do so, which is good. So one of the things I did, which has been annoying me since I moved in, is not having all my tools easily accessible. So I made the little tool board there. And they're the tools I use most of the time. Um, 
and things like files where I, I don't want them all bashing around into each other in a drawer somewhere. It's good to hang them up so they don't hit each other. Uh, this little table is really handy for toolboxes and socket sets and things like that. So anything where you, you want it sitting out and you want it accessible. So you can open these up. You can get to the things that you want and they're just sort of easily there. Um, just really silly little jobs that really help and make things easier in here. So I made a little block for all my my punches and my center punches and drifts and scribers and pencils and things like that. Uh, that really helps. I'm still sorting out what goes where in terms of um, paints and things like that. Uh, all my glues and Loctite that sort of stuff. I think I've moved the, the drills and the charges and things around multiple times already, but uh, slowly it's all starting to make sense. These I'm just repairing and sanding and giving a light linseed oil. Uh, therefore, records, holding records in, and the speakers will go on top of those. That's in the house. The Riley, not much progress today just general tidying up getting it lined up sorted out I did make from the leftover wood from the the other timber benches I made one for the lathe uh, so previously I had the lathe sitting on this little steel bench but it's not very stable it's a little bit wobbly so I wanted something a lot more solid so I built this from what was left over from building the the two big workbenches, and uh, that's a lot better. It's a lot more solid, a lot more stable. I do just have the cheap tin shelving underneath there. I've actually got it screwed into it, so this one's reasonably rigid because it's all screwed to the timber frame. Uh, that works well. I've actually got more storage here than I had before because I've got more drawer units and things, so stuff is disappearing into drawers, slowly getting organized. Uh, what else? This is my cabinet of explodey things. So there's just gas cylinders, thinners, um, turpentine, mess, things like that are all inside that cabinet. And the rest of it's still pretty much a big mess. So I'm slowly starting to figure out the shelving there I'll just go through that bit by bit and try and organize things and put things where they need to be um, I've already started sort of on the bottom shelves get all the old Austin awesome stuff down there out of the way and packed up nicely unused Riley stuff is up there as well I've got all sorts of magazines and bits and pieces I still need to sort out and I still need to figure out how I'm going to make the racking for long lengths of steel. Um, that needs to go up on the wall, really, up along there. So I think the the plan will be screw something to the to the um, framing, the steel framing, a piece of timber, and then I can attach bracketry to that to hold the uh, the long longish lengths of of metal. I want to get them out of the middle of the floor here because it's kind of dividing everything up as well as all this big pile of bits, boxes of timber and things like that. It kind of separates it out into, into bays and I wanted to do that along there because that's where all my tools and, and machines and things are but it makes more sense to have all of this as open as possible. So I want to get all of this stuff out of the way. And, of course, there's all the other stuff that will eventually go into my little outdoor office, hopefully. But the I've been going through all the boxes of tools and, and sorting those out, um, throwing away things I didn't need, that kind of stuff. So, slowly it's getting there. And it's quite nice having this little area as well where I can just sort of relax a bit. Um, at the moment I don't need this for works, workshop space, I've got plenty of space around the car, there's lots of room to do things, but I think once 
this car sort of moves across to there um, because of course one thing I have to consider is if I build the car here I still have to get it out the garage doors which means moving it all the way around there um, so I don't want to fill it in I don't want to box it in basically or, or trap it in here but uh, eventually this should move to that middle bay which will make it a bit easier and I've still got all this room here and I think that's about it it's one thing I should add about this little loungy sort of area is anything that goes there I want to have easily movable so if the car is still here theoretically then I can I can get it out through that way just by shifting all of this stuff um, obviously shifting the workbenches is possible they're not bolted down at all it's just a pain to move everything off them so you can move them around so that'll probably stay where it is for now and if I need to I can get around it so I mowed the lawn this morning and we've laid out a track slash path through the gardens we're just testing is it going to be good for racing and we have raced I was on the lawn tractor Simon is on the Austin Oh, it's a pretty good track, little kink there, just a little bit of kink, you know, not too much. And then round, and then the barrel along the straight there, hit straight. Whee! I think it was pretty good, quite fun. And the middle will basically be an orchard. Um, yeah, pretty cool, eh?